pain is a universal human experience. Whether it's a headache, a muscle sprain, or post-surgical discomfort, almost everyone has relied on painkillers at some point. But how do these medications actually work? Why do some painkillers provide quick relief, while others take longer or have different effects on the body? The science behind pain relief is both fascinating and complex, involving intricate interactions between the nervous system and biochemistry. In this video, we'll break down the mechanisms of painkillers, explore the different types available, and discuss their effects on the body, potential risks, and how they should be used responsibly, right here on History of Simple Things. Before diving into painkillers, it's important to understand why we feel pain in the first place. Pain is the body's alarm system, designed to alert us to injury, illness, or other problems. When you touch something hot, twist your ankle, or have an infection, specialized nerve cells called nociceptors detect damage and send electrical signals through the nervous system to the brain. These signals travel through the spinal cord and into the brain's pain processing centers, where they are interpreted as discomfort or agony. This process is essential for survival because it helps us avoid danger and seek medical attention when necessary. However, sometimes pain persists longer than needed or becomes chronic, significantly affecting daily life. This is where painkillers come into play. They interfere with pain signaling to provide relief. Painkillers, also known as analgesics, work in different ways depending on their type. The three main categories of painkillers are non-opioid analgesics, opioid analgesics, and adjuvant medications. Each type targets pain through a different mechanism and understanding these differences is crucial for proper usage. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, such as ibuprofen, aspirin, and naproxen, are among the most common pain relievers. They work by blocking enzymes called cyclooxygenases, which are responsible for producing prostaglandins, chemicals that promote inflammation, fever, and pain. By reducing prostaglandin production, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs decrease swelling and sensitivity at the site of injury, leading to pain relief. These medications are particularly effective for conditions like arthritis, menstrual cramps, muscle soreness, and headaches. However, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can cause side effects such as stomach irritation, ulcers, and an increased risk of bleeding, especially when used in high doses or over long periods. Acetaminophen, also known as paracetamol, is another widely used painkiller but works differently from non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. While its exact mechanism is not fully understood, acetaminophen is believed to act on the brain's pain centers rather than directly reducing inflammation. It inhibits a variant of the cyclooxygenases enzyme found in the brain, which helps lower pain perception and reduce fever. Acetaminophen is commonly used for mild to moderate pain, such as headaches and fever, but unlike non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, it does not reduce inflammation. One major concern with acetaminophen is liver toxicity. High doses or prolonged use can cause severe liver damage, making it crucial to follow recommended dosages. For more severe pain, such as that resulting from surgery, cancer, or severe injuries, opioid painkillers are often prescribed. Opioids, including morphine, codeine, oxycodone, and fentanyl, work by binding to opioid receptors in the brain and spinal cord. These receptors are part of the body's natural pain control system and are normally activated by endorphins, chemicals that help suppress pain and create a sense of well-being. When opioids bind to these receptors, they block pain signals from reaching the brain while also producing a feeling of euphoria, which is why they have a high potential for addiction. Opioids are highly effective for severe pain, but their use comes with serious risks. 
Over time, the body builds tolerance, meaning higher doses are needed to achieve the same level of pain relief. This can lead to dependence, where the body physically requires the drug to function normally. If opioids are suddenly stopped after prolonged use, withdrawal symptoms such as sweating, nausea, and severe discomfort can occur. Additionally, Opioid overdose can depress the central nervous system, leading to slowed breathing, unconsciousness, and even death. This is why opioid medications must be used with extreme caution and only under a doctor's supervision. In some cases, pain originates from damaged nerves rather than inflammation or injury. This type of pain, called neuropathic pain, is often resistant to traditional painkillers like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and opioids. Instead, doctors may prescribe medications originally developed for other conditions, but found to be effective for pain relief. Antidepressants, particularly tricyclic antidepressants and selective serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, help manage chronic pain by altering neurotransmitter levels in the brain and spinal cord. These neurotransmitters, including serotonin and norepinephrine, influence how pain signals are processed, reducing the intensity of discomfort. Similarly, anticonvulsant drugs, such as gabapentin and pregabalin, are used to treat nerve pain by stabilizing overactive nerve cells and preventing excessive pain signaling. These medications are often prescribed for conditions like diabetic neuropathy, fibromyalgia, and postherpetic neuralgia. While painkillers provide much-needed relief, they are not without risks. Long-term use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can lead to gastrointestinal issues, kidney damage, and increased cardiovascular risks. Acetaminophen overdose is a leading cause of acute liver failure, often occurring when people unknowingly exceed the safe limit. Opioids, due to their addictive properties, have contributed to a global crisis of dependency and overdose deaths. Even seemingly harmless, over-the-counter painkillers should be used responsibly, following dosage instructions to minimize harm. Painkillers have revolutionized modern medicine, allowing people to manage discomfort and improve their quality of life. However, they are powerful tools that should be used with caution. Understanding how different painkillers work helps us make informed decisions about their use, ensuring that we get the relief we need while minimizing risks. Whether it's a simple headache or a chronic pain condition, responsible use of painkillers can lead to better long-term outcomes. And remember, it is always important to consult a healthcare professional for guidance. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.